no, probably the short answer is no. We're working towards it for sure. Uh, when I started off at Lords, there wasn't really a defined fertilizer regime or any program like that. So um, certainly, I think Mick was quite reactive uh, in terms of things he did. But now I think we're trying to be more proactive and have our own programs. Um, now that I'm one year into the job and definitely looking at things a bit more and sort of introducing more organic pro uh, products into our uh, in our regime, and I think hopefully one day we'll get there 100%. What about you guys at uh, St George's? Um, in football, it, it, it's slightly difficult because uh, at, at the top level you renovate your pitches every year. So to have like that long-sighted view of being organic and looking after the soil year on year is really difficult because you're trying to produce a pitch for the next camp, the next match, the next you know the next month. Um, but yeah, no, we, we are really trying. Um, certainly in the summer months, from renovation through to the end of the growing season, we are pretty much all organic. And then as we go into the winter and we have to find that recovery, then we, we're going back to the synthetic feeds and stuff. So it's it's something that we really want to do, and it's the right thing to do. But in our you know arena, it, it, it is quite complicated. Yeah. So obviously, there's no chemical out there at the moment that can deal with it 100%. And um, we've tried a couple of things with heritage and things like that, and we haven't had much success. Now looking at steam sterilising, I've been over to Wimbledon a couple of times and look what they've done with their courts. Uh, they didn't do it directly for fairy rings, but the byproduct was they've had good results on eradicating their fairy rings. So hopefully next year we'll trial on two or three pitches. I hope to get it done this year, but things just didn't align quick enough. But so uh, I think that's going to be our next plan of attack with that. Yes and no, because if we're talking about you know going organic, then they kind of the, the two sort of counteract each other really. So you know it, you, you need to pick a direction. Are you building a pitch for a year? If you're building a pitch for a year, then yeah, to, you know steam sterilisation is great for you know eradicating nematodes and whatnot. And then you can basically start from a, a clean canvas like every season. If you're looking to build a pitch year on year and, and develop something that improves year on year, then obviously it's, it's not the answer for you. And obviously there is a massive cost involved in it. So, you know, you have to weigh up the pros and cons. Like I would say in a stadium where you're playing 30 games a season, ripping your pitch up, going again, it's a very good option. If you're building pitches that are going to last five to 10 years, then definitely not. I think obviously your reputation precedes you, but you're also only as good as your last pitch. So um, you have to maintain relationships in the industry. You have to, you know, talk to people, and and you know, really, you're promoting yourself every day. Every day you're in in, in the arena, like you know, you're trying to talk talk about the right things and and look after the right people. Uh, Burgess. <laughs> All right, Paul. I'm in the middle of something. You have to start that again. All right. Um, I'm. Uh, I'm actually on a, a Q and A session <laughs> with um, Carl from from Lords yeah. and Scott from uh, EFA. Has he got a question for us? Have yeah. you, actually, Scott said, "Have you got a question for him?" <laughs> yeah. Go on. Then what have you got? You're, you're not mic'd up, so I'll. <laughs> I think from my point of view, um, the MCC have a sustainability manager themselves, so um, we, do, we do discuss things and we're talking about how machinery is going to go and use of organic uh, fertiliser and things like that, but uh, for me, unless the club get rid of the, the sustainability manager, it's probably his baby, really. Yeah, I, I, ag I agree with Carl. Like, I'm responsible for our side of things in terms of bring, introducing battery powered and electric mowers and battery powered strimmers and whatnot and make seeing what we do with our grass clippings and looking after those responsibly but the FA have actually got a sustainability manager and you know all I can do is is help them do their job and make sure that the organization is more sustainable going forward because so I better get on with this <laughs> but thanks for calling cheers fella bye bye I think you were saying let your, your work speak for yourself, you're only as good as your last pitch. Yeah, I think, I mean, really, like, I am in my dream job. Like, I, love, I love my job, but, you know, 
things can change very quickly in this industry and, and you know like I say it's about maintaining relationships so that if something does go south or it doesn't quite go right you've got options basically it's all I'm saying so you know I appreciate where I am I'm very very grateful and very privileged to be where I am but like I, I never like look at that solely and not that tunnel vision like you have to have those relationships for what comes next no I think probably for me being an Irish man who worked at a small cricket club in Dublin at the time um, Irish cricket grew while I was over there and I was lucky to be involved in a club that grew with Irish cricket and uh, I got more opportunities to travel overseas and sort of broaden my experience and then it sort of got to a point where I thought you know I've reached as far as I can go with, within Irish cricket and a move to county cricket was sort of natural for me and I suppose you could say that was a dream to come over here in one sense and sort of escalated from there really and probably to think you know 20 years ago that I'd be working at Lords probably was a dream and um, where I am now is probably through a lot of hard work and dedication I think to get there. So for you is there anywhere else to go after Lords or is it kind of? You know it's it's amazing <laughs> a lot of people ask me that question the day yeah. I got the job yeah. you know and I said oh, no I'm, I'm happy <laughs> enough at the moment you know so uh, no the short answer is no really you know um, Lords I think is probably the pinnacle for a lot of cricket groundsmen and um, I can't see anywhere higher to go for me at the moment. So since you've been in there, and it's, it's what, you've done a season now, yeah. I guess, yeah? Um, have you put your stamp on it yet? Um, a little bit. Um, what that stamp is, I don't know. Uh, a lot of people have said the pitches look different. And I sort of say, how? And they don't really have an answer to that either. And, but I think, you know, this season, the pitch has improved slightly. Um, there's a lot of work to do on it, for sure. But um, being cricket, you know, things happen quite slowly. You know, you can't make dramatic changes very quickly on a cricket pitch. So I think it's a work in progress, really. No, I think um, certainly at this level or at any level, even club cricket up to international cricket, you know, there's always the guy in the bar that uh, has a comment about the pitch and things like that. I think it comes with the territory, to be honest. Um, you know, you've got to be fairly thick-skinned to deal with it. Um, you know, Joe obviously had his opinion on the pitch at the time. Uh, obviously, my opinion differed greatly to what he said. But I think, you know, as an individual and as a team, you know, we knew we prepared something that we were happy that we delivered on the day. And, um, you know, the England captain's, you know, choice of words or whatever probably, um, you know, okay. are what they are. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, not in too much detail, but like yeah. in, in my first winter, I, I had to send an email to the, the technical director apologising for the quality of the pitch. Uh, the pitch had had over 60 games on it. We had a really bad winter. So, two, two years ago, if you go with all the snow that we had, hard frosts, very little recovery. We've had a big schedule of football. We played the football anyway. Um, because obviously we're, we're driving revenue and then after 60 games or 60 usages we're putting an England team onto that pitch and it's it's not the standard it should be for an England team and obviously there was there was complaints and you know I had to apologize for you know not creating the, the best surface possible and you know we, we learned a lot of lessons and we moved forward from there and now we've reduced the usage like we, we tried to limit what we can put on there try to not have our hands tied so much and you know since then thankfully we've had some really good pitches some really really great surfaces and feedback's been a lot better but you know it it does happen uh, you know even at the top level you can produce a bad pitch and get in a lot of trouble and I was very lucky that you know it was justified why why it was bad so so um, I, I asked not 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 players like obviously the players always walk out and they go to pitch looking nice and whatnot. That's that's nothing. Like I'm, it's the, the the best piece of news I've had is when I've asked for feedback, and the technical directors come back to me and said I've not heard anything. No news is good news. <laughs> that's that's as good as it gets. Wow. <laughs> I think that's the same in cricket. You know, their players and coaches are very quick and commentators are very quick to have a pop at um, a bad pitch but very, very uh, reluctant to sort of remember the good pitch. Uh, they always remember the bad pitch, not the good pitch. But um, yeah, it's frustrating, but I think what probably in that situation, in our situation, when 
England turn up, for example, they don't know what's happened last week or two weeks ago or six weeks ago and how busy we have been and things like that. So, um, you know, as a club, we're very keen to work with England and get things right. But sometimes the weather or fixture congestion or things like that have gone against us. So, um, but, you know, at times, you know, they just don't realise that's what, that's what happened. It's a slight frustration, but, you know, it comes with the job. Sort of like I think really it comes back to ourself. Like if we're trying to raise the profile and, and, and raise our you know our own status, then really really we need to be fully dialed up on what's going on. So if we're going into a meeting and we're asking people for money to, to buy something that's gonna make the pitch better, you need to you know come across really professionally, you need to you know have a really uh, justified business case and you know, it's no good going bleating saying like, oh, I'm really hard done by, because people aren't going to listen. Like, if we're trying to raise the standard, then you, you need to raise yourself to the level of the people you're addressing to, you know, to get that buy-in and, and earn that respect. And, you know, that's something that is really difficult because by, by nature, we're practical guys who, you know, come into the industry, perhaps with not with too many qualifications, right? and, you know, we've had to teach ourselves to, to get to that position and grow very slowly whereas these guys gone to university done done the usual um, straight into middle management upper management and you know we're playing catch up all the time so we need to be extra vigilant and uh, we need to be you know really really on it when it comes to trying to address these people to, to raise our status yeah, yeah. yeah I, I agree I think at every level you know if you're looking for better machinery and things that have to be a club to international level you know we haven't probably got an open checkbook. We can't just go and buy whatever we want. So we have to justify everything. And you know, the more confident you are in what you want and what you need, and uh, the fact that you can justify things, you know, I think it gives you a better case to improve your own facility and club. I think we're probably way behind where football is at the moment and from cricket terms. Um, lights and hybrid pitches, and other things are only just starting to come into cricket now. Cricket definitely hasn't got the money that uh, football has to follow these. Um, so we're playing, it's a very slow game on catch up. But, um, you know, hopefully, you know, within the next decade, a lot of cricket clubs will uh, have caught up on that front. And it will make us think for sure. But we can definitely learn off these guys and uh, ho hopefully take that forward within the industry. Um, at the end of the day, like, you know, like I said, I'm in a very privileged position, but I am tasked with managing, you know, multi-million pound surfaces, like, you know, and as an asset manager, it, it really is my job to be on it in terms of collecting the data, monitoring how they're performing, how the, how the usage is going, like making sure that when there is a problem about to occur, we're on top of it. it it's really, really important that we embrace the data because at the end of the day, like I say, we're talking about, you know, Masses, masses of money like going into the being invested in these facilities so it's really really important that you know we embrace it and we, we don't try and shun it and, and like put it in the corner because it's not going to go away as soon as that asset fails big questions are going to be asked so why not you know take the data on board and understand why it's failed or why it's failing and, and then learn, learn from it and move forward from there so I think the technology is vital.